afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, I would like to talk a little bit about the position of Cadet Flight Sergeant within Civil Air Patrol and some of the duties associated with it to kind of give an overview on some of my thoughts in addition to what the Cadet Handbook suggests are responsibilities associated with the position. So let's jump into it. It first starts with discussing that the minimum to maximum suggested grades for a flight sergeant is between Cadet Staff Sergeant and Cadet Chief Master Sergeant. Cadet officers really shouldn't be serving in flight sergeant roles. And it's a transitionary role between being an element leader, which is that really direct ta tactical level in charge of a very small handful group of people, to being a first sergeant or a flight commander. And the flight sergeant has multiple responsibilities to their flight, one of which is providing information that is passed down from higher up in the chain of command. So let's say the flight commander received information that you are doing an inspection the upcoming meeting. Then the flight surgeon is in charge of talking to the element leaders and their flight members about the upcoming inspection. And in addition to that, they can provide mentorship and guidance on basic drill maneuvers while leading them in the flight. And if you think of like how formation works, typically the flight surgeon is the first person that follows everyone in. And then when you're told post, then the flight commander takes their position in, in the front of the flight and the flight sergeant goes to the back. Okay, so that is something to keep in mind when it comes to being a flight surgeon. In addition to that, flight sergeants help with coordinating between the flight members and the flight commander. So it does involve passing information down, but it also involves passing information up and giving feedback. So being an advocate for your flight members is a great thing that the flight sergeant can do. For example, if cadets are having a hard time with a specific drill maneuver and you have flight time scheduled soon, your flight commander may not know specifically what you want to work on or what your cadets want to work on. So the flight sergeant can advocate for the team and be like, hey, this is what we'd like to accomplish. And then you can move on from there. Another thing that flight sergeants can do is help establish goals for the flight. And the process that I recommend when establishing those goals is first reaching out to the members of the flight, getting input from the element leaders and the flight members and then having a discussion with the flight commander on agreeing what the priorities are and ensuring that you're meeting the higher ups goals with like their strategic plan and the operational goals that they have established for the unit and then provide that insight and feedback from your people and kind of blend them into one cohesive goal setting process. In addition to those responsibilities that I had mentioned, a flight sergeant can also help with motivation for PT. Typically the first sergeant leads PT or it might be another NCO who has training with that and by doing PT in flights the flight sergeant might be helping lead specific activities. Sometimes people do PT with their entire squadron sometimes they split it off into flights so it depends. Like if your squadron is doing runs like Indian runs for example, and each flight is doing their own activity with those Indian runs where you've got the people running along and let's say the person in the back has to go up to the front and you keep on running along and then the person who's in the back runs up to the front and you keep running. And the flight sergeant might be able to come up with running cadences and keeping the team in sync, providing motivation and just overall providing that positive attitude while you are completing PT. Finally, another responsibility of flight sergeants is being an instructor. So depending on what your unit does, sometimes flight sergeants might serve in staff positions on the support side. So you might be teaching classes to the entire unit, which is a great thing to do. But in addition to that, you might be teaching specific classes to your cadets in your flight. So let's say there is a concept with followership that you believe should be highlighted a little bit more clearly and you have materials teaching that concept. Then you can teach your cadets during flight time or whatever time you've been assigned. And then by teaching those concepts, you can ensure a collective foundational knowledge of what members in your flight know, and they can work together to make sure that they are meeting expectations. 
one of the most challenging things that I faced when I was a flight sergeant was that I had a really hard time with calling commands confidently, or at least at first I wasn't really sure how to do it. So I have given this recommendation in some of my interview videos, and I'm going to say it again now. I would tell the commands to myself. So I would be in my basement and there was enough space for me to do some movements. So I would just be taking small steps and I would be marching to myself. And then I would be like, flight, halt. And then I would follow the commands. And then when I needed to do like column left, I would be making sure that I keep track. What foot do I call those commands on? And then confidently say it. So like column left and left flank, you do left flank, Parch, pivot, step, right? And you call it on the foot in the direction that you're trying to go or to the rear. What foot do you call that on, right? So making sure that you are confidently able to call commands by commanding yourself first and then maybe even working with a sibling or a parent, practice teaching to that person who may not have experience. I know personally, I had some great mentors when I first joined Civil Air Patrol on how to do drill and ceremonies. And by practicing those skills of how do you teach other people, how do you mentor other people in a brand new skill that they're not familiar with, that can be super duper helpful later on in your life. So by learning how to teach things and going like step by step through a process of like working your way up when you're talking about the position of attention or just focusing on the feet first when you're doing those stationary movements and then focusing on what the rest of their body is doing by focusing in on specific steps that are essential to completing the maneuver and then putting it all together you could have a super effective teaching method to ensure that members of your flight are successfully completing those maneuvers so again i I joined when I was pretty young and I started being a flight surgeon when I was about 13. Well, 12 slash 13. So develop your command voice as well. And it's not just yelling. There's something called your diaphragm, which is right here, right here. And when, like if you're a theater kid or if you do singing in choir, you're told to sing from your diaphragm, which is right here. So an exercise that I have personally done to help find my command voice is putting my hands right here on my tummy, like right below where my rib cage is and going, huh, huh. And then when I go, huh, I feel my abs compress and going, huh, and they tighten up. Okay. So if you want to get volume, I don't want to be too loud because my neighbors get, might get mad at me, but going, huh and being able to increase your volume without using your throat. A lot of people do not properly learn how to use their diaphragm when they are calling commands. And so they're like, ah! Ah! and they, they lose their voice, like at the beginning of encampment because they don't use their diaphragms. Use your command voice and your voice will actually sound a little bit lower if you're using your diaphragm than if you're using your throat. So do the huh exercise and practice doing it outside. Don't do it inside because one, you might disturb your family and neighbors. And two, it gives you a clearer depiction of how your sound actually travels. And if you were out at an encampment, you're going to be calling most of your commands outside anyway. So those are just a few recommendations that I personally have for flight sergeants. If you're about to be a flight sergeant, good luck. It'll be a lot of fun. And if you've already been serving as a flight sergeant, I hope this was just a helpful review on responsibilities and then maybe provide a few extra ideas to help move on from there. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. That is all folks. Until next time. Toodles.